if you take air in one, two, then this is less than two times uh, x1 to the air divided by n. Because here you have, you, you, you don't have a moment of order two, so you, the central limit theorem, for instance, is, is not true. So you're saying that when p is one, if, uh, if, yes. if r were two, I could put the parameter Yes. OK, so I don't mention the case r exactly equal to, because uh, I wanted just to separate the two cases, but it's exactly that. OK. So, um, oops. Yes, in the case d equal 1, we have a result from uh, Del Barrio et al, uh, Del Barrio Gine Matran, uh, proving the central limit theorem for W1. And this, uh, this central limit theorem is as follows. If, uh, you've, if this condition is true, so the integral of the square root of h of t uh, finite, then you have the convergence in distribution of square root of n times w1 mu n mu to uh, the, uh, this integral of a Gaussian process. Uh, and, uh, they prove also that uh, the sequence double, uh, square root of n w1 mu n mu is stochastically bounded if and only if this quantity is finite. So just, um, this is a not so complicated to understand uh, because if you look at uh, the quantity W1, remember, uh, it is the integral between the empirical distribution function minus uh, the distribution function. And if you look at these processes, And, and you, you look, look at, at these processes, processes uh, with, with t in, in r. r. And, and you look, look at these processes, processes in L1. And, and we, we know that, that this quantity converge in distribution as n goes to infinity in L1 to a Gaussian process g if and only if the integral of the L2 norm of uh, indicator of x1 less than t minus f t is finite. And this comes from the fact that the space L1 dt is of cotype 2. And you can find uh, this in the book by Ludwig Talago. For instance, it was known before, I think. So, so here is a necessary and sufficient condition uh, to, to get, get the central limit theorem in L1. In L1 once you get the central limit theorem, oh, I forgot, the square root of n. Once you get the central limit theorem in L1, then you can deduce uh, the central limit theorem for W1. And this uh, is equivalent to uh, this condition uh, with the square root, which is also equivalent as the, to this condition. So this is to explain uh, why you get this condition uh, here in, in the horizontal inequality, inequality the, central the central limit theorem will, will not be true with a, a moment of order 2, but with a stronger condition there. And uh, you can also prove uh, almost true result still under this condition of the integral of the square root of h finite. Then you can prove a compact law of the iterator, iterator logarithms uh, here. So you have the almost true rate of convergence. Okay, so uh, in the case d equal to 1, uh, there are also other results uh, 
with, uh, but re requiring more assumption on mu to get other uh, rates of convergence. And uh, everything is well explained in a recent monograph by Bob Koff and Ledoux. Okay, and now I want to consider the general case. So we cannot start from Ebralidze inequality, which is true only for T, uh, D equal to one. And uh, uh, for D greater than one, uh, there have been uh, many interesting uh, papers since uh, the past 10 years. And uh, for instance, there are very precise inequalities in these two papers, Deresh, Schutzhoff, and Schottstedt, and a paper just after by Fournier and Guillain. And the two, the two papers are not independent. Uh, the, the result by Fournier and Guillain uh, is based on a lemma in the previous paper. Yeah. And uh, so, we will use uh, the following inequality by Fournier and Guillain. And Guillain. Uh, which is as follows. So uh, it looks a bit complicated. You see, there are two sums. Uh, but what is interesting, so mu and nu are two probability measures again. Uh, what, what is interesting is that here you get uh, the difference between uh, two, two measures on the same set. So this uh, will be easy to work with when we get the empirical measure here because we can go back to uh, partial sums and we know uh, all inequalities uh, for this partial sum. So, and in, if you look carefully, it is not so, uh, it is not so different from Ebralidze inequality. So maybe I, sh I should speak of, of the set Bn. So Bn is like that, Bm. It is a thing like that. Sorry. Okay, so this is 2 to the power m and 2 to the power m minus 1. So this is this set. And you split, you, you make a small, a small uh, squares uh, to get a, a partition of this, of, this, uh, of this set. And this, this partition is given by the partition PL there. Okay, and if you look carefully at this inequality, in fact, it is not very different from Ebralidze. Um, the main difference is that you, you, get, you get sums instead of integral, but this is not so much a problem. Okay, so you can work with this inequality almost as with uh, Ebralidze inequality. And for instance, what th this is what we can prove, again, if R is between one and two. If R is between one and two, you can uh, derive this deviation inequality for WP to the power P. And you see again, uh, this is what uh, is called uh, sometimes the weak form of von bar essen inequality because uh, what you get here is the weak moment of, uh, of this quantity because you, you have the X to the R there. Uh, the sign, the, this sign is just big O. And you see again the rate n to the power r minus 1 in, in the case uh, where uh, r is between 1 and 2. But this is true only for small dimension. And as in fourier guillain uh, you have a cut between uh, uh, the small dimension case and the large dimension case. And if, if, you get, uh, on, if d becomes uh, large, you, you got here another rate of convergence. And you can prove that the rates uh, here with n are optimal in a certain sense. <laughs> I will go back to this question of optimality at the, at the end. Uh, in the sense that uh, you can find uh, some measure mu for which this, this rate uh, is, ex is the exact rate of convergence for the deviation. So uh, here are two examples. But as you see, these are examples where the measure is as full support for, with, with respect to the Lebesgue measure on R. I will go back to this. And um, when R is greater than two, 
the correct inequalities for the deviation uh, is what we call a Fouque-Nagayev inequality. So we are able to prove this thanks to another inequality by fournier guillain and uh, a bit of work. Here is what, uh, what we can prove. So again, you have the deviation. The first term is uh, something that decreases at an exponential rate in terms of n. And here you have two terms, but you, you can uh, forget about the, the third one because, as you see, uh, it is just a technical term, uh, meaning that, uh, in fact, it is negligible because you have all the latitude you want uh, on Q, uh, provided you don't care about constants. So, of course, if you take Q very large, you, uh, you will have a, a constant which can be very, very large. But you can imagine that this, ter this term is zero. So, the main term, in fact, is the second one. And uh, you, you see that uh, we get, again, uh, the rate n to the power r minus 1. Okay. Um, well, a small remark, you have this quantity appearing in the residual term here. And uh, again, it is expressed in terms of uh, the square root of h. Okay, so this is uh, the Fouque-Nagayev inequality. And uh, it is a bit more precise than a similar inequality which, which was proved in the paper by uh, fournier guillain because uh, they had a small epsilon in the remainder term here. So they couldn't get the r n to the power r minus 1 in the, in the deviation bound there, which, which is, of course, possible with the previous inequality here. So there is a small improvement here. OK. Well. And now uh, about moment inequalities. So uh, if, if I look at moment inequalities, moment of order r to the r of w p to the p, uh, again, if r is between 1 and 2, you will have this quantity. So you see the difference between this bound and the previous one is that here I have the strong moment for x. Whereas here it was the weak moment. But it is uh, exactly the same kind of inequality. Okay, so this is again the von Bar Essen inequality. And uh, we have the same cut uh, regarding the, dim the dimension. So in, in the small dimension case, you've got, you've got uh, what we have proved for d equal 1. And if d is large, then you've got, you've got the, this other rate of convergence, n to the power r times p divided by d. So uh, what I said uh, previously about um, this von bar Essen inequality, you can see again on, on uh, the w1 norm, as a w1 distance here. Because uh, if you look at the dual form of the W1 distance, you see that the, this inequality is a supremum of f uh, in the set of function of Lipschitz function. So this is, in fact, uh, a kind of uh, uniform version of the von bar Essen inequality because you take the supremum over a large class of function, not apply this only to one function f. OK. And uh, if you look at mom, uh, the moment uh, when you have a strong moment of order Rp when R is strictly greater than 2, then you can get, again, uh, some kind of horizontal type inequalities. So here you see there are three cuts. So if D is small, you've got uh, what we proved in the one-dimensional case. This is exactly the same quantity with uh, the, this moment condition MP. And uh, the main term is this one. Uh, 
Um, then you have an intermediate, uh, uh, an intermediate case, uh, but still it's not so, so bad because the main term is still this one here. It's here gamma can be as small as we wish if we don't care about constants. So the, the dominating term is still this one, this kind of moment divided by, by n to the power r divided by 2. And again, if d is large, meaning that uh, d is uh, greater than 2p, then you obtain this rate of convergence. And if you, if you look at examples to see if uh, this rate is optimal, you can uh, every time find uh, some measure showing that uh, you cannot have a better rate than this one. Okay. And now if we want to have almost true rates of convergence, uh, it is possible because um, in all the inequalities I have presented before, I can put some maximal, I can get um, the maximal versions of these inequalities. So uh, I, I will not write what is the maximal version of these inequalities, but it's not uh, very complicated. The, the point is, once you get maximal versions, then you can uh, use... Um, ah, I don't remember the name. Ah, then you can use some well-known uh, inequalities, uh, Bomcats inequalities, to get almost sure rates uh, of convergence. So this is standard. And for instance, you, you can prove the following. If uh, you have a strong moment of order Rp with R between 1 and 2, then in the case of small d, you got the almost true rate of convergence here, n to the power R minus 1 divided by R. And you got uh, this rate of convergence here if uh, d is large, n to the power P over d divided by log n to the power of 1 over r. So the correct argument is Bohm-Katz. And if you look at the case p equal to 1 and a small dimensional case, then you can prove that the rate is optimal because uh, you have this lower bound and you can apply on the, uh, the marcinkiewicz sigmund strong law of large number on, on the right side to get exactly uh, the rate of convergence which is uh, announced here. So the, the rate is optimal here in the first situation and p equal one. Equal one. Okay, this is for uh, when r is between one and two and if r is greater than two and more precisely if we have this condition, which is uh, a little more than a moment of order 2p, then uh, you can prove uh, a, a bounded law of the iterated logarithm when d is small. It is uh, the result which is proved there, which is uh, given there. And if d is large, then the, the rate of convergence will be of order n to the power p over d, as before, and uh, with an extra log-log term here. So again, in the case p equal 1 and d equal, equal 1, we, we know that the rate of convergence, which is there, is a good one, because we know that there is a compact law of the iterated logarithm. So this proves that in, the, in this case of small dimension, uh, it is probably a uh, good rate of convergence. Okay, so now comes the discussion part. <laughs> um, what about um, the, the, the rates of convergence? So, as you see, there are two, two separate cases, the case of small dimension and the case of large dimension. For small dimension, uh, we have strong uh, argument. 
uh, to think that uh, the, the previous rates, like this one, are the good ones. Uh, the real question is what about this rate for the large dimensional case? And here uh, the, que the question is not at all uh, easy. <laughs> Uh, so I recall some previous results, the first one by Talagrand, who showed that in the case where P is equal to 1 and D is larger, strictly larger than 2, and mu is the uniform measure on uh, 0, 1 to the D, then the rate should be exactly of order n to the power uh, minus uh, n to the power 1 divided by D. So this means that it doesn't get this extra log log term there. And uh, you have uh, another result by Bar Barton Bordenave, which, we, which is uh, more general, saying that if D is greater than 2P, so the same cut as, as we get before, and there is a strong moment of order RP for a certain quantity R, which is there, then uh, the rate is again of order n to the power p divided by d. In fact, there is also a, low, a lower bound of the same kind. And uh, this inequality is very interesting because you see that if uh, the, the quantity appearing, appearing here is uh, the absolutely continuous part of, um, of mu with, with respect to the Lebesgue measure, which means that Uh, this rate can be much faster is, uh, if the measure is not, uh, has not uh, a part which has a density with respect to the Lebesgue measure. So you see that here, the rate is n to the power p divided by d. So again, uh, there is no extra log log term here. So we, we cannot compare our result with uh, those by Bart and Bordenav because uh, they have a strong uh, moment assumption there. Uh, and uh, we just prove the result under this condition, which is mo much more weaker. So we cannot compare the result, but the question still is, can we prove the bound by Bart and Bordenav if we have uh, Uh, this, this uh, moment for air between 1 and 2, or this condition on the tail uh, if P is less than D divided by 2. So this is an open question. I do not have any answer. So the question is, can we get rid of this log-log term there? Okay. So these are the first questions about the almost sure rate and this gives me a transition to the discussion about the dimension because you see that if uh, mu has no density uh, uh, with respect to the Lebesgue measure on RT, then the, the rate here should be better than this one. And this, uh, this is the purpose of the next slide. So, As in Fournier and Guillain, we, all, all the rate of convergence we get uh, uh, depend on the dimension d. And of course, they are suboptimal if mu is supported in a vector space of dim dimension d, d star less than d. This is uh, obvious. So uh, this question is, of course, uh, of interest. Uh, and uh, Boissard and Le Guic And after back and weed gives bounds in terms of the intrinsic dimension of the support of mu. And in particular, when, uh, when we are in this case, d greater than 2p, uh, in the famous paper by back and weed, uh, there is the definition of the Wasserstein dimension, d star p of mu, which is a quantity which is between 2p and d. And if, uh, in, in that paper, back and we shows that if mu is compactly supported, then for any s greater than this Wasserstein dim dimension, the rate is of order n to the power 1 divided by s. So you see that uh, 
it is as if you take uh, as if you could take s exactly equal to this quantity there. So you have better rate of convergence that, uh, than in the case uh, where mu has a, a, an absolutely continuous part with respect to the Lebesgue measure. Okay, and uh, this raises, of course, <laughs> um, an interesting question is, uh, ca can we get the same bounds, for, the, for instance? So the, the bounds given in the paper by uh, back and with is uh, for the expectation of uh, WP to the P. So if I take this inequality, for instance, can I... Uh, can I prove the same bounds, but here with d star instead of d? This is a natural question. <laughs> I don't know the answer, but maybe, maybe you know. Okay. So uh, I don't know how much time I have. Okay, I still have. Uh, I just wanted to show you some hints about the proof for the first deviation inequality, for instance. So you start from, uh, maybe I will just give you back the main inequality by fournier guillain this one. Okay, you have this inequality by fournier guillain and uh, the quantity of interest is this uh, distance between mu and mu, del delta p of mu, this uh, sum. And when you want to prove a moment inequality in probability, as usual, you have to truncate. So this is what we, we have done with Florence. You, you cut, your, uh, you, you cut the, the last term there. Uh, according uh, as uh, you, you are in CM, which is this set there, or to the, in the complementary. So you have two quantities, and then the deviation can be, of course, uh, written like this. The C is only uh, the constant appearing in, uh, in, appearing in fournier guillain inequality. And so you have to control these two terms. And, uh, of course, you can make a, a basic Markov inequality. And once you get the, the, this step, you can just uh, contract everything and put the norm inside the sums. Okay? So it's very basic. And once you are there, you put the norm inside the sum and you apply the von Barresen inequalities to the empirical measure. And uh, so you get exactly this. There is no mysteries at all. This quantity is, uh, is appearing. And this one for the two terms, A and B. And now you just have to choose the quantity Q and S to make everything be uh, convergent. So you just have to look <laughs> at the sum in the eyes and take the right Q and the right S. So I give you the answer for, in the case where P is less than, when P is less than D2 times R minus one divided by R, you just have to take Q greater than R, and S in a one R such that P is less than D times S minus one give, divided by S, which is possible because you are in this case. You apply, uh, okay. Once you get there, when, once you take Q and S like that, uh, you see that every sum will converge without difficulties, and you get this bound. Okay? And now you just have to use your moment assumption to control the two integral. Okay? So if you know that H is uh, bound, if you have a um, Excuse me, if you have a weak moment of order Rp, you know that the function H is like that. So uh, you put this in the two previous integral, you make the computation, so no, no mysteries at all, and here is what you get. And at the end, of course, you have to choose the level of truncation 
but uh, it, you just have to equalize the two terms there, and you get that m should be of the order n to the power 1 divided by d times x to the power 1 divided by p, and you get exactly the result which was announced in the first inequality for the large dimensional case. In the small dimensional case, you have to choose Q and S in a different way, but it works also. Okay, just a word about dependency because I cannot make an expo uh, a presentation without saying something like that. Uh, we want to know if some part of the bounds are true Uh, in the non-IID case, so we first, of course, consider the strictly sta stationary case because uh, this is uh, uh, the more natural situation when you have uh, the ergodic theorem and things like that. And uh, in the one-dimensional case with Florence, uh, we prove uh, some result in the alpha mixing case and, in, in fact, in a more general situation. So if you don't know about alpha mixing sequences, you should just remember that it contains the case of Harris recurrent uh, irre irreducible on a periodic Markov chain. So the usual Markov chains that everybody uh, has in mind. So this is contained in this, in this case. And uh, for D uh, greater than one, Things are a bit more complicated, but you still can uh, define an appropriate dependence coefficient on this dependence coefficient, uh, which was defined a long time ago by uh, Clementine Prieur and myself, in particular, is, um, is less uh, than the usual beta mixing coefficient. And again, the usual beta mixing coefficient can Uh, can deal with Harris recurrent Markov chain. You just have to know that. And uh, I just put you the result uh, for the L2 norm because uh, in the other case uh, it, it becomes much more complicated because you have to uh, apply horizontal inequalities for dependent variables and this is um, quite complicated. But for uh, the L2 norm, here is what we can prove. So in this situation, uh, you get the, the red square root of n as, as expected. You, you are in the case where there is a weak moment b greater than 2p and the condition on b is this one. And you can prove that uh, this is a good condition on b. And you have a lot of other results. And in particular, here, you see that the rate of mixing is uh, like that k to the power 1 over k to the power a, uh, which means that we are in the short memory cases. So we can expect to uh, obtain the same kind of results that we get before. But if no, if a is less than 1, then uh, the rates are not so good. And if you are in the intermediate case, you just lose a logarithmic term here. So I won't I will not give uh, more information, so I've, I've got another slide for the uh, large dimensional case, and I put the result only for a, a greater than one, so short memory case. And again, here you find uh, the good rate of convergence, provided you have any moments, uh, um, you have, uh, excuse me, uh, enough moments. And this is a uh, a part of uh, the PhD thesis of my uh, student, Cinda Amus. Uh, and this, this is not completely uh, over, this question. So I think I just want to put the main references. So let's go back. The, the article by Back and Weed, uh, the article by Del Barrio Giné Matran, the paper by Barton Bordenave, the monograph by Bovkov and Ledoux, the paper by Boissard and Le Guic, so the two papers uh, by myself and Florence on which, uh, which, from which the results are taken. Uh, the article by De Reich, such stuff on short set, the inequality by Epralidze, the paper by Fournier and Guillain, the historical paper by Frechet, 
the historical paper by Marcinkiewicz and Zygmunt and the paper on Talagran about uh, the problem of matching in many dimensions. That's enough for me. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Any questions?